Welcome back, I'm Gian. This week, I am back with another video featuring my mom. This time, she's going to show us how to make metanji. I'm really excited about this one because this is one of my favorite dishes. She's going to be showing how to do it from beginning to end, from the peeling, the chopping, the coconut milk, the duff, every single thing. So let's get started. Here are the vegetables you're going to need. We're using edo, sweet potato, plantain, cassava, which we're going to simmer in a coconut milk broth, which will also have salt fish in it. The first step is to peel all the vegetables. You also want to make sure to cut the vegetables the same size so that they cook relatively at the same rate. Next, she's going to get started on peeling the cassava. And I know cassava can be tricky for some who are not familiar with this root. Now, she's making a slit along the side of the peel and then she's going to make another slit. Then using a small knife, she's going to pry it underneath the peel and then just work her way around. Usually it comes off in one piece, but this cassava was, it wasn't behaving itself. But this is pretty much the process and you repeat it until all of the peel is off. Let me tell you, cassava can be very deceiving. Like this cassava looks relatively good, even though you can see some um discoloration and once we cut it open we realized it was not good at all so we had to discard this piece because it will not cook well this is what you want your cassava to look like pretty even color next we're moving on to the sweet potato and as you notice this is the white sweet potato it's sold in some stores as boniato i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly here's a little tip you guys if you don't live close to west indian market it's always good to visit other ethnic markets such as Asian markets or Spanish Latino markets because you can find the same produce under a different name. For example, I purchase Bora at the Asian markets. They sell it as snake beans or Chinese long beans. If you can't find cassava, you can head to the Latino market and you can find yuca. They also have it sometimes in the frozen section already peeled. So that's a great place to look for that. Next, we're going to move on to the plantain, and I personally like my plantain relatively green in metem, but we use green and half ripe. Now, as you can see, she cut a long slit along the peel, and she is moving her fingers, prying it in between the plantain and the peel, and making her way around in order to peel it. Now, this one is relatively green, so she had to work a little bit harder. As you can see, the riper the plantain, the easier it is to peel. Now that everything is peeled and chopped, it's time to give it all a good rinse. Then we're going to move on to cooking the metem. The full recipe with measurements is on my blog giancancook.com and that link will be below in the description box. You will need coconut milk for this recipe. We made our own and I shared that video on this channel already and I will leave it below in the description box so be sure to check that out. You can use canned, of course, but homemade is always better. The first thing we're going to do is saute onion, thyme, and pepper. And we're just going to saute it for just a few minutes, about two to three minutes, before adding the coconut milk. You need quite a bit of coconut milk, enough to cover the vegetables. That's why making it yourself will be the best bet versus buying cans of coconut milk. And my video is going to show you step by step how to make it. The recipe post talks about all the tools needed and show you how simple and super easy it is to make your own coconut milk. Once the coconut milk has come to a boil, we're going to add all of the vegetables. Now, we're going to add the plant in last. We're going to put it on top because that is going to cook faster than anything else. And we're going to pull that out so it doesn't turn to mush. Now, I'm also going to add salted cod, which I've soaked overnight to remove some of the salt. And I just tore it into chunks. And we're just going to add this directly to the pot. This is going to add a wonderful flavor. Next, we're adding some homemade green seasoning. And I will link this below. I do have a video for this as well. If you do not want to use saltfish in this recipe, you can also use salted beef or pigtail. 
it's totally up to you. You can also leave all of those out and make it completely vegan. Now we're going to let that cook and move on to making the duff. For the duff, you're going to need flour, baking powder, sugar, salt, butter, and you can use water or milk. Now duff is a kind of a dumpling. It's really light and fluffy and it is, it's so good. As a kid, my favorite, my two favorite things in Metem was duff and sweet potato. I literally wanted nothing else but those two things. Once she's mixed all of the dry ingredients together, she's adding the butter. And as you can see, she's kind of pinching off little pieces. And this is room temperature butter. Next, she's going to rub the butter into the flour before adding any liquid and she's going to use water. But as I mentioned, you can use milk as well. And as you can see, she's adding the liquid little by little because she cooks by feel. But I had to have her measure everything just to be sure that I can give you guys accurate measurements and that you can have the exact results. Now she's going to mix this to form a relatively soft dough and you just keep mixing it until it all comes together and once you form that ball you're just going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. Now it's time to check on our plantains and we're using a fork to test it and it is ready so what we're going to do is remove it from the pot with a slotted spoon, place it on the side while the rest of the vegetables continue to cook. And you will know the plantain is ready once you can pierce it very easily with a fork. Now back to the duff. Now my mom is just gently rolling it out and she's going to separate this into equal pieces. And as you can see, she's going to make them into relatively small pieces, small balls, because this is going to puff up once it cooks. One thing that I love about these videos with my mom is actually watching her do this as I edit and it makes me realize how much of a master she is at some of these dishes. Now we have our little balls and these don't need to be perfect because as you can see we're going to roll them out into a log and then gently press it with her finger to make the duff. As you can see, these aren't huge. They're roughly about the size of your finger. Remember, these will puff up as they cook. Place them into the pot and cover for at least five to seven minutes. Do not peek or they will fall and become dense. And as you can see, the duff has puffed up. So this is done. Shut off the stove, get your plate. It is time to eat. And this is what the final dish looks like. That coconut milk makes a nice, thick, creamy sauce. The vegetables are all tender and perfectly cooked. The duff is soft and adds a nice contrast. This is just a beautiful plate of food. Definitely worth the effort. As always, the full recipe will be linked below in the description box. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a kind comment below for my mom and thank you guys for joining me again. I will see you in the next video.